I had this idea for two brothers that were estranged and were brought back together through violence. And I made Miracle, I had said to the studio, we need to find hockey players and I'm going to teach them how to act because I'm never going to get actors to play hockey the way I need them to play hockey. Warrior, there's more that happens outside the cage than in the cage, dramatically, emotionally. The complexity of the characters is such that I needed actors, which is even more difficult because now you have to have actors who you have to teach how to fight. The movie will live or die on the reality of what's happening in the fighting. Tommy Hardy has the most important quality I was looking for, for Tommy Conlon. And that was this rough exterior, but underneath he was a little boy. There was a vulnerability. The initial fear was the physicality as well of being an MMA fighter, um, which I have no previous experience at all. Not only is this man a prolific mixed martial arts fighter, but he's also from a very old American working class, you know, blue collar territory. Um, so there's, there's two transformations there already, and then accent transformation, physical transformation, and cultural transformation before I even start this, the story or the drama. So um, my initial response to the film was, I'll, I'll never be able to pull this off, <laughs> ever. Live with me for five days. Somehow that happened. And uh, we started working on the character and I shot his audition. But I knew he was the guy. Tommy was, I can't, hundred, I can't tell you how many guys, I mean, it was getting discouraging. We didn't think we were gonna find anybody. And then the other part, Brendan, we, were, we saw a million people again. Again, can you, you, know, you needed a guy you could buy as a family man, and then also as a guy who's ultimately going to be the best fighter in the world. You know how hard that is to buy a guy who you know, can fight like GSP, but he also, you, you believe him in a classroom, you believe him with his children. That's an incredibly nuanced role. Edgerton kills it. But Joel also has a rough side. And I knew for the part of Brendan, I needed a guy who was living in his higher self, who was this guy who has changed who is not repeating the sins of the past. He's that guy. But he's also a guy, when you look at him, you go, you know what, I could see he was a barroom brawler. He had that in him. Gavin searched for a year for these roles. And, and I think in the, in the casting process, he would ask these guys if they would ever get in the ring. And, you know, most actors, the reason they're acting is they, real life's a little too tough. You know, they'd, they'd rather pretend. It's a real movie ending, you know, it's like, it shouldn't work. You know, if you watch it, it actually shouldn't work, but it absolutely works. I think it's an incredible ending. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm proud of the film. I really am, and I'm happy with it, and we did it. Like, what I was trying to go for, which I didn't know that we were actually going to be able to do, but what I was attempting to do, I can honestly say we did. Hey Lisa here, now goofs or mistakes are common in the making of all movies and according to the Movie Mistakes website, the movies with the most goofs are Apocalypse Now with 390, Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban has 296, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets has 289, Superman 4 The Quest for Peace has 267 and The Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring has 262. Mm. Now do you like my t-shirt? You can get one for yourself in the link in the description.